Hi everyone, this is Shaker and Davey Cooking Channel, the Outside World Entertainment. Welcome to the Fireside Cooking. Today we'll make mullet choker, bacon choker with tomatoes and roti. So here I'm at the supermarket. I'm going straight into the seafood department. So I'll get my mullet. So I select a mullet and I give it to one of the employees to clean it. So now I got the bacon balanchi or eggplant. And this is what I'll make the bacon choker with. I also pick up some nice fresh red tomatoes. And the bacon and the tomatoes will go into the fire to roast. So here I make sure the fish is well clean. And now I'm going to ready for the season. So here's the fish, mullet, and it's time for mullet choke. So here we're cutting this, the fish. You can see we cut the flesh of the fish and we'll do it both sides. And the reason why we do this, we want the season to get into the flesh of the fish for to marinate the fish well. So here time for the seasoning and we use lemon pepper. And this lemon pepper consists of salt and black pepper. And we'll do it both sides of the fish. We'll also use some paprika and we also do it both sides of the fish and you make sure you rub the seasoning well into the fish. So here we also add some onion powder onto the fish and also some garlic powder. We make sure we do it both sides. So here now we'll transfer the fish on top of an aluminum file and this aluminum file we will wrap it up with. So before we wrap the fish into the aluminum file we'll add some more seasoning so we'll stuff the belly with some garlic. And here we add one tablespoon of olive oil both sides of the fish. And the reason why we add olive oil onto the fish is to keep it moist while it is cooking. Now here we add lemon juice on both sides of the fish and this lemon juice will give it that lemon flavor onto the fish. And here we wrap the fish up into the aluminum file. Make sure it wrapped properly and we'll put it in the refrigerator for approximately 10 to 50 minutes so that the fish will marinate. So now the fish is seasoned and placed in the refrigeration. So now we'll season the bacon. Here we have our bacon, we wash it clean and we'll punch holes on it. And the reason why we punch the hole on the bacon is to season it with garlic. We'll put garlic into the bacon and the garlic will give the bacon a very good flavor. So here I have two red tomatoes. I'll actually actually work on the tomatoes too. I was I'm not gonna season the tomatoes, I'm gonna just punch some hole on the tomatoes. So now I'm gonna wrap the bacon in the foil paper. And the reason why I put the bacon in the foil paper is to prevent it from burning during the roasting. And also I will do the same for the tomatoes. I'll add some olive oil into the tomatoes and this to keep it moist during the roasting. Now I'll wrap it up and both the bacon and the tomatoes are ready to be roast. Now it's time to light the fire and now the fire is lighting I will add coals into it, the charcoal and then I will add some red hot coals and now I'm gonna place the fish, the bacon and the tomatoes into this red hot coals and this coals will roast the fish, the bacon and the tomatoes and this will bring the roasting flavor and I will leave this process for approximately 30 minutes. 
So now is the time to make the preparation for the roti. And to make the roti, we'll use five roses flour. So here we add approximately six cup of flour to make the roti. And we'll make two different type of roti here. We'll make oil roti and we'll make sekal roti. Oil roti is paratha roti and the sekal roti is sara roti. So here we add some baking powder into the flour. Approximately one tablespoon of baking powder and this will make a very good roti. So here we'll mix the baking powder into the flour. You mix it up well, make sure the baking powder get into the flour. You want to mix it up well because you want a nice soft roti. So now we add some water into the mix. So here we farming the dough of the roti and we'll have to keep kneading it. And by kneading it will give you a good roti. You can even add some oil into the kneading to make it soft. So we have our dough well kneaded. We keep kneading it for a few minutes more, maybe approximately a minute and a half more and let it knead properly. More you knead it is a better roti for you. So here is the roti dough, it's well kneaded. And now we'll cover it and leave it for approximately 10 to 15 minutes before we start farming the roti. So here the fish the bacon and the tomatoes roasting for approximately 30 minutes already and now we'll have a check on it. So now we remove the fish from the roasting process. We'll take it out and we'll check and make sure that the fish is properly cooked. So here we checked and now you can see the fish is properly cooked. Look at this. I can smell the ingredients of the fish. I can smell the roasting garlic. And you can even see the bone of the fish. The middle bone is loosing off from the flesh of the fish. This means that the fish is well cooked. And it's time to make the fish choker. Well, this will be a very delicious fish choker. I can't wait to have a bite on it. So here we remove the flesh from the fish. Wow, so delicious, I can smell it. We'll try to scoop every single flesh of the fish skin. And also we'll have to watch for the tiny bones and remove the tiny bones from the flesh. So here now we're making an extra seasoning to the fish choker. So we add chopped onion, we add some green onion, hot pepper and we also add some olive oil. So here the fish choker is looking so delicious. I want to taste it but I'll add a lime juice in it and you can even add lemon. Any one, both of them work the same. So it's just a little reminder that we add some salt for taste and here we have perfect mullet choker. So it's time to remove the balanje or bagan from the hot reddit coals and we will check it to make sure that the bagan is cooked and also we will remove the tomatoes from the red coals too to make sure both bagan and tomatoes are well cooked. We can see that the bagan is well cooked and now we will check the tomatoes. And hey, the tomatoes is also well cooked. And let's start making our bacon choker with tomatoes. Oh, I can smell the garlic into the bacon and I can smell the roasted tomatoes. So here we cut open the bacon or balanje. And you can see exactly that the flesh is actually loosing from the skin. And this is the way you want it to be cooked. 
And the reason why we're cutting it like this is because it's easier to remove the flesh from the skin. And you can even see the smoke is coming out from the balanji. And I can smell the roasted balanji with the fresh garlic well roasted. And this is the way the balanji must be when you're making a bagan joker. So here all the flesh is removed from the bagan, separate the bagan skin from the flesh. So we use the flesh and we're gonna mash it up here right now. And this is the way you start to prepare your bagan choker. Now we'll take the roasted tomatoes and we'll add it into the bagan or balanji. And the tomatoes will mix with the bagan to make the bagan choker. And it's the same proceed, you mash it up together and imagine a combination with two vegetable bagan and tomatoes. So now we have the tomatoes, the roasted tomatoes mixed with the roasted balanchi. And we'll add some ingredients. We add chopped onion, we add chopped green onion, and we'll make it a bit spicy by adding hot pepper, chop it up add it into it and a tablespoon of olive oil and then we also add a pinch of salt and now our choker is ready and you can see the redness of the choker the bacon mix with the roasted tomato so here we have our bacon choker with tomatoes and our mullet choker So now our roti dough is ready. The first thing we do is to stretch the dough and to make individual dough for each roti. We'll make al roti and we'll make two sekal roti. So here now we'll get five oil roti, that's paratha roti, and we'll get two sekal roti which is sada roti, or you can call it pita bread. So here we are cooking the oil roti first, that's the paratha roti, and what we do is to shape the dough, and then we're gonna use a rolling pin, or in Guyana we call it a belner, on top of a chow key, which we call in Guyana, or a clean cutting board. So here is the dough finished rolling, we try to roll it as thin as possible, and then we'll use the oil and approximately a tablespoon of oil and the oils that we use is olive oil and you can use any oil cooking oil you want it then you add some flour on it before you farm the dough now you cut it you split it like this and then you roll it around to farm the dough and here we have one oil roti ready to cook So we have finished farm all our dough, the oil roti and the uh, sekal roti, and now we're gonna start cook our roti. First thing we do first is to preheat our cooking pans that we're gonna cook the roti on. So here we're ready to begin the final process. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna roll the roti, roll the dough once more with a rolling pin or you can call it bailey. So you roll, try to roll it as wrong as possible. And then you add some dry flour in it and the dry flour prevent the dough from sticking onto the rolling pin. Try to roll it as thin and wrong and you will get a perfect roti. So 
Now the roti is on the baking pan. Here you can say baking of the roti or we can say cooking of the roti at the same time. And here you see that the dough is rising. We flip it over and you can see it start to cook on the other side. And one process that we add approximately half a tablespoon of oil and this called the baking process. The oil will help the roti to bake faster. And then we'll flip it over again and we repeat the same process by adding approximately half a spoon of cooking oil. And then we'll keep turning it until it cooked properly. Yeah, so here the roti is cooking. Oil roti is my favorite roti. I love oil roti. Oh. So we keep turning it and here the roti is finished and we do the final process by clapping it and clapping it will make the roti a softer texture. So now is the time to cook the sekal roti or the sada roti. And it's the same process as the oil roti. We roll it with a rolling pin or we use a bellner to roll it. The oil roti we use cooking oil during the baking process. With the sada roti we don't use any cooking oil during the baking process. Now the seka roti or sala roti is almost finished baking. And the final process we do is to transfer the roti from the pan to the fire and let it cook on the natural fire. And we'll have to keep turning it to prevent it from burning. So here is the two different type of rotis that we cook. Oil roti or parata roti. Sekal roti or sada roti. And now, bacon choka, fish choka with tomato is served with roti. So everything is finished and now is the time to have a good taste on the food. Look at the bacon choka with the tomatoes. Wow, look at the roasted mullet with all the ingredients and I can smell the ingredients right now and I'm gonna taste it with the roti and hot pepper sauce. So I'm ready to do a little bit of eating here and before I do that I always love a little whiskey or brandy or a beer but today I have Hennessy and let me have a drink of Hennessy before I do anything. Here I pour the Hennessy into a nice shot glass and I'm gonna take a Good drink. So now I'll have a taste of this good, beautiful food. Look at the bacon choker with the tomato mix in it. Look at the roasted mullet with all the ingredients. I can smell the ingredients and I got my roti. Let me take a taste of it with the hot pepper sauce. And look, oh man, I can smell the fresh ingredients right now. Here I have a taste of it. Beautiful, well cooked, well done. I all I keep eating everything I have in the plate. Try the mullet choker. And I'll add that hot sauce into it. More spicier, better for me. Yeah. Very good, tasty. Cook on a fireside. So this is Shaker and Davy cooking channel and remember it is a fireside cooking and we cook roti, mala choka, 
Bag and Choka with tomatoes. And if you like our show, please give us thumbs up and subscribe to us and we'll see you on our next video.